Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part in my Create a Quick Great Tone series for our Line 6 Helix where I kind of revisit topics I talked about in previous videos but do a much more condensed and quick look at those features and show you how you can utilize them. Today I am talking about what I feel is one of the most useful features for anybody who's using their Line 6 Helix and that is snapshots. Well, let's head over to HX Edit and take a look at what these actually do. So here we are in HX Edit and I have a little preset set up here. Um, now you might say, what is a snapshot? A snapshot is basically our ability to switch through little, basically snapshots, pictures in time of the state of settings within the blocks we have within a preset. What snapshots can't do is change the actual amp block we're using or change the actual delay we're using, but it can change the parameters within those existing blocks that we have within a preset. And it can also save the on and off state of it. So for instance, I have a little preset here with a Scream 808, a Placator Dirty going into a 412 Greenback 25, a low and high shelf EQ, a transistor tape delay, a hall reverb, and an LA Studio comp at the end of that chain. Up here, we have a little pull down menu called Snapshots. We have eight of them on the Helix. We have three of them on the HX Stomp, four of them in the HX Stomp XL, and four of them on the Pod Go. And basically what I'm talking about here will apply to all of those different devices. So if I'm here on snapshot number one, let's say that I wanted uh, one sound accessible that was these settings right here with the delay off and the reverb on and the Scream 808 off and I have this sound. <laughs> And we're very happy with that. But let's say that we had a need in the same song to maybe have the distortion pedal kick in and maybe the drive setting jump up to 10 and to have the delay engaged. And we go, well, what can I do? Well, I guess I could assign the delay and the distortion pedal to a particular foot switch so I could engage those, but that's gonna require me pressing both of those. And then how do I get the drive to go up to 10? Well, I could also assign that to a, a pedal as well, but now I have to make three pedal switches to get all of that to happen. Or I can just do this. I could say on snapshot one, I have my distortion off, I have my delay set off, and I have these settings, which I like. Now, if I switch over to snapshot number two in the pull down menu, I could also hit control two, we have these same settings. But now if I click the distortion on, click the delay on, and leave that, if I switch back to snapshot one, you'll notice that it saved the bypass state of those effects. So in snapshot one, the distortion pedal is off and the delay is off. As soon as I switch to snapshot two, the distortion is engaged and the delay is engaged. And I can also do that obviously from my pedal board in snapshot mode. <laughs> So we see how easy it is now to have one state of this preset with the distortion and delay off and one with them turned on with one button push. Now there is a setting in global settings, which is important that I talked about just last week in a video I did about the global settings. And we can have in our global settings, the ability to either discard or recall our snapshot changes. I always have mine to recall them. If you have it set to discard, if I make a change to a snapshot, like turning these blocks on, I would simply have to come over here, hit the save button every time if I wanted those to actually stay that way. Now, what about if I wanted this parameter here when I switched to snapshot two, to, let's say I wanted the drive, like I mentioned before, to jump up to 10. Well, what I can do here is I can either right click on the parameter I want to control and you'll see at the bottom it says snapshots. Now I can also just hold down my alt key on my keyboard and left click on my mouse while doing that and you'll notice the little snapshot icon comes over next to this particular parameter and the parameter value turns white and has little brackets around it. This can also be accomplished on the unit itself by pressing and turning the encoder for the particular parameter that we have and you'll see the same thing will apply. It'll turn white with little brackets around it. We know we're now in snapshot mode. So now I'm on snapshot one. I have my setting of 5.3. If I switch to snapshot two, you'll notice nothing's changed other than the other previous changes I made. Distortion on, delay on, now I'm gonna grab this slider and I'm gonna move it up to 10. Now you'll notice that when I switch between snapshot one, I'm back to my 5.3 setting, snapshot two, up to my 10 setting. 
And we can do this with multiple parameters. Let's say I also wanted to bring my channel volume down at the same time to compensate for the higher drive setting. So on snapshot two, I engaged my snapshot mode and let's say I wanted to bring this down to six. I'm just making a guess here. Now when we switch between snapshot one, you'll notice we have a drive setting of 5.3, channel volume of 8.2, distortion off, delay off, Snapshot 2 has a drive setting of 10, channel volume of 6, distortion on, and delay on. Obviously, I brought the channel volume down too low on that one, but I was just kind of guessing. So that is a quick overview of what these snapshots can do. We can kind of take just that, a little snapshot of the state of all the parameters within our different blocks that we have. As I mentioned, we can't change blocks. We can't change, for instance, this from a transistor tape to a simple delay, but we can change all of the parameters. And again, if we just hit Alt and right click any of these to turn that snapshot mode on and off. We can also use it for some functions maybe we wouldn't have thought of. Maybe on snapshot two, instead of having a 121 ribbon mic four inches back, uh, I'm going to put both the distance and the mic into snapshot mode. Maybe on snapshot two, we want that, but on snapshot one, we want a 57 at just one inch back. You'll notice now when I switch between snapshot one and snapshot two, it now also changes the microphone as well. Obviously need some work balancing the volume between those, but not the point of this video. Is this more to show what we can do? So what do you guys think? Uh, the reason I want to do this video again is I have a much more in-depth video about snapshots, talk about many more of the possibilities and settings we can use with it, but I still get a lot of questions and I wanted to do a very quick condensed video just so I could point folks to this video to get a very quick overview of how snapshots work. Uh, I do get a lot of questions about it and I also see a lot of folks asking in the forums different questions about it and I thought it would be good to have a nice quick kind of condensed video explaining what they actually do. I hope that was helpful and I hope I explained it in a clear manner and I hope it helps you to be able to utilize snapshots in your presets a lot better. So please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get use out of watching it. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.